Hello and good evening to you. Welcome. This is Ghana Tonight. We are live from our news up here at Tadesawe Kanda. Also live on 23 Ghana on Facebook, DSV channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. I am Alfred Konse. Tonight, embattled member of parliament for the Dom Kwabenya constituency, Sarah Joasafo, begs for forgiveness from President Kufuado, her party, the NPP, parliamentary caucus, and her constituency executives. An apology too late in time. We'll hear from the consensus executives whether they are going to admit this apology in any way, shape or form. Stay with us. Finance Minister Ken Oforiata stands strongly with the governor of the central bank, Dr. Ernest Addison, in the face of fierce criticism about the performance and dealings of the central bank. We have details of the minister's article and some expert views on the matter. Mama Yariga is our guest tonight. Stay with us. The Electoral Commission of Ghana is alleged to have, on three occasions, evaded the service of contempt processes brought against the Commission in respect of the ongoing voter registration exercise. We we'll hear from lawyers of the applicant on their move. Stay with us here on Ghana tonight, as always. You are an integral part of the conversation. Let's hear from you. Uh, we're very, very interactive. The hashtag we're using is Ghana tonight on Facebook and Twitter. Let's get talking. Well, let's settle for Ghana Briefs. Seven fishermen are reportedly missing at Azizanya in Ada. The Ada East District NADMA coordinator, Ebenezer Te Kise Nate, who confirmed the incident indicated that two fishing canoes carrying a total of 19 fishermen capsized at the estuary while trying to enter into the Volta River. He indicated that all 12 fishermen in one of the boats were rescued, but the seven others in the second canoe are still missing. He noted that NADMO together with the Ghana Navy have embarked on a search and rescue mission. <music> Finance Minister Kenoforiata says attacks on the management of the Bank of Ghana over the 60 billion cities loss is needless. In a six-page open letter to Ghanaians following heavy criticism, the Finance Minister urged Ghanaians to support the construction of the new head office for the central bank. <music> Boku Central Member of Parliament, Mahama Ayariga, has in reaction to the Finance Minister's statement called for his resignation over the defence of the Central Bank Governor. He tells TV3 the Minister has admitted to orchestrating the failings which led to the 55 billion city loss posted by the BOG. The Finance Minister, by this statement that he has made, has admitted that he is the architect of what the Governor has done, which has destroyed the Central Bank and destroyed the financial sector. Lawyers for a private citizen who sued the Electoral Commission have accused the Commission of evading service of a contempt application. Despite multiple attempts to serve the writ, the Commission has initiated limited voter registration, despite several injunction applications aimed at halting the process. Once you are served with the contempt process, the next step is that the court will jail you if you continue with the very thing that we are seeking to stop you from doing. And that is why she's evading the test. And we can assure her that we are not the test. We will go back to the court, we will get hopefully the court order for computer service, and we will come back. The ECOWAS Commission has reiterated the single currency for member countries. The ECO will be launched in 2027. President of the Commission says, despite shortfalls of member countries in meeting the convergence criteria, the Commission remains committed to launch the ECHO in 2027. He was speaking at the opening of the 45th meeting of the Board of Governors of Member States in Accra. As we move closer towards 2027 deadline for the establishment of the ECOWAS Monetary Union, we rely on you for your enhanced support and cooperation towards the effective and timely implementation of the activities outlined in the roadmap for the launch of the ECHO.
Uh, there's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, the Electoral Commission of Ghana is alleged to have, on three occasions, evaded the services of the contempt processes brought against the commission in respect of the ongoing voter registration exercise. We hear from uh, lawyers of the applicant, that's uh, Precious Ayita, on this particular development and, and what next for them. Because uh, let's, let's place this issue in context and, and lawyers for the private citizen who sue the Electoral Commission have accused the Electoral Commission of evading the services of a contempt application. Now, despite multiple attempts to serve the rate, the Commission has initiated limited voter registration exercise despite several injunction applications, about four of them from what we do know, aimed at halting the process. This is what happened earlier today, and uh, the bailiff who went to the EC's office was also denied entry. Take a look. Well, so this video we're told was on the third attempt. This was outside the offices of the Electoral Commission earlier today. That's what you see there. In fact, the bailiff um, was denied entry uh, by the security of the Electoral Commission. Now, Nick Bako Samoa Ado is private legal practitioner and lawyer for the applicant in the matter seeking to commit the Electoral Commission for contempt because they have sought an injunction on this ongoing limited voter registration. Ni, thank you very much for joining us here on Ghana Tonight. How long did your unsuccessful attempt to uh, serve the EC chair and her two deputies with this contempt suit last earlier today? Well, you were, you were there. We've been there. We were there from, I believe, from 9.30 till almost about 11. So, as you are aware, the rules of court require that we should attempt a minimum of three times to serve the person. So, we have exhausted that minimum requirement today, which now entitles us to go back to the court and inform the court that clearly Madame Jimensa and her two deputies are not only evading service, but they are obstructing service. Because if you recall, the originating motion, which is the commencement document and the injunction, they were served, they received it. Why is it that for the contempt? Because they know what they are doing is illegal, and because they know that if they are served with the contempt, they will could there will be no excuse for them when they are called before the court to explain why they should not be jailed. They are evading the service. But we can assure her that she can run, but she cannot hide. The rules of court anticipate such that uh, misbehavior and has made room for persons, recalcitrant persons like this. It is sad that Madame Jimenez herself is a lawyer and is behaving the way she's behaving. But nevertheless, we are not deterred at all. We will ensure that she is safe. You see, we must set a precedent that nobody is above the law in this country. Madame Jimenez is a public servant. The EC, the Electoral Commission, is a public place. She does not control the movement of people there. She cannot dictate who and who can come to the Electoral Commission, especially when it's a court process server. I mean, what, the, what impedes that a court bailiff in the discharge of his lawful duties and then you, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, a public servant, is dictating how a, pub, a, a, a court bailiff should be able to have access to a place to serve documents. How is this possible? How is this possible? How did we get here? That somebody believes that she can barricade herself as if she's in a personal a personal house and decide how and where a court bailiff can discharge his duties and give instructions to policemen to obstruct the service of the of the of the bailiff. This is conduct that cannot be tolerated in this under a constitutional dispensation. And we will call her out. We will hold her accountable. And so rest assured the process will be set in accordance with the court rules and regulations. What is going, in fact, we are strengthening that the fact that she is evading the court process in respect of the contempt reinforces our belief that what she is doing, she is aware that what she is doing is wrong. Other than that, what is she afraid of? She should accept the process and come to court. 
if she comes to court and the court says what we are saying is wrong, that if it strengthens her position. No, and I, I, I see. Why is she uh, running away from well, the court well, process? So, Nick, the, the EC chair, uh, from the knowledge that you have instructed the security of the Electoral Commission not to allow this court bailiff in, and you're saying this is the third time this is happening? Your own reporters were there. Your own reporters were there. That is why I'm happy it played out before the media. So that Dr. Sribo will not come on an interview and tell you that he's not told anybody not to be able to gain entry into the Electoral Commission headquarters. All the media people were there. Play back your tape. You will see. They have locked their place and barricaded the place and decided who and who can have access, including the court bailiff. So we will take that issue back to the court. And hopefully we are sure the court will, will move on to the next step of how to serve and give us the necessary orders so that we can effect the service. I see. So uh, at what point did you leave the, the, the premises of the Electoral Commission earlier today um, after this, this scene that we, we just played a brief video of? We are not there to confront or fight with anybody. But we need the evidence that the three attempts have been made and she has refused to accept service. Because what she knows is doing, she knows is wrong. How can you be disenfranchising over three million Ghanaians and nobody should challenge you? Nobody should hold you to account? Is she above the law? Even the president of Ghana is subject to law, not Madame Jimensa. We are sorry. We will not allow her to become a demigod. I see. So what's, what's the next step for you? I mean, and, and your clients, because the registration is ongoing and you raise these very germane fundamental issues. So after these three attempts, and you not being able to serve the the respondents in this case, because from what I understand, this contempt case, these respondents have to be served personally. The EC chair, Jen Adukwe Mensa, and uh, Dr. Bosman Asari, they all have to be served personally. So what next for you? Indicated. We have satisfied the three requirements of service, personal service, because remember that the process we are serving is what we call a content application. It mm -hmm. demands personal service. When you are not able to effect the personal service, you need to go back to the court for new orders in respect of how the service should be should be conducted. And so we'll return to the court and ask the court that we have provided evidence. The bailiff of the court has been there. The place is locked up. The EC commissioner is refusing to be served. I see. So so when would this be, this, this return to the court to let them know that you've attempted three times, you couldn't get access to them, so the next action has to be taken? When is that going to be? Oh, God willing, we'll have it done uh, in, the, in the coming days. It is, very, it is a, it's a very short process. So all things being equal, we expect to hear something positive by Tuesday afternoon. Okay. Thank you. Nick Bako Samoa Ado is a private legal practitioner and the counsel for the uh, this, uh, Atija Precious, who is one of two private citizens taking on the Electoral Commission for this ongoing vote, uh, limited voter registration exercise taking place in the district offices of the Electoral Commission. We'll see how the coming days will look like on this matter. But coming up next here on Ghana Tonight, Finance Minister Ken Oforiata stands strongly with the Governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Ernest Addison, in the face of fierce criticism about the performance and dealings of the Central Bank. We've got some detail on this um, article from the Finance Minister. And some reactions as well shortly. Stay with us here. But uh, this is what the finance minister put out earlier today. It was an article that he titled Standing Strongly with the Central Bank. Take a look. We have excerpts of that statement for you. And shortly we'll be joined by Mama Yariga Boko, Central Member of Parliament. And then also Professor John Gachi, the Dean of the University of Cape Coast Business School. But this is what the finance minister put out earlier. This is it. First off, he says, the modern economic policy consensus is clear. Central banks can and do run on negative equity. And they can make losses to support economic recovery. And these losses will not be counted as failure, as in commercial banks and enterprises. In fact, as some critics of the central bank in our country do observe, the primary objective of a central bank is not to make profit but to be managed as a financially sustainable institution and you recall that the the governor of central bank has made a similar argument that they are not established to make profit as in commercial banks we'll find out if there's any valid 
uh, position in, in this particular case that the finance minister is espousing. He continues that with respect to the Bank of Ghana's new headquarters, the evidence is clear that this the decisions to build had already been made long before these losses occurred. It's emphatic. It is important for us to support such a critical institution to modernize its operations and have a befitting office space for a country that hosts the AFCFTA and has a vision to become the financial services hub of the continent. It goes on and on. So he ends by saying, as indicated by the IMF, the Bank of Ghana was the loss absorber for the debt exchange to ensure that in light of the concessions to other domestic bondholders, its burden share of the debt exchange would also be absorbed. So essentially, these are the some highlights of uh, what the finance minister put out, standing strongly with the central bank, an article earlier today. Mama Yaraga is Boko Central Member of Parliament and then also Professor John Gachi, the Dean of the University of Cape Coast Business School. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Start off with you, Mama Yaraga. So the Finance Minister is saying that, look, he's standing strong with the Governor of the Central Bank and the Central Bank for that matter, and that your criticisms of the Central Bank is practically baseless. That's what he's saying. Well, I mean, the finance minister says that we should praise the governor because uh, two or three or four years ago, the governor brought inflation down to single digits. But today, the same governor has brought inflation to over 40%. So if when he brought inflation to single digits, he deserved praise. When he became incompetent and inflation got to over 40%, then there's a basis for asking the governor to leave office. He says that the governor uh, stabilized the city at a certain point. Today, the city has jumped and at a certain point was the worst performing currency. So on that basis, we think the governor also has to take responsibility for that. And yeah. as you can tell, he has rendered the bank insolvent. And if you render the bank that you are managing insolvent, you cannot be praised for that. You cannot be praised for that. If the assets of the bank uh, lose value and the liabilities of the bank are far more than the assets of the bank by over two to five billion dollars within your tenure. You cannot be paid for that. If you print money and give to government, and by law you are required to go through certain processes to do so, and you fail to do that, you cannot be paid for that. This same governor, for reasons, which reasons are today applicable to the government? He closed the bank because he said they did not manage their risk very well and had a lot of bad debts on their books. This governor has excessively lent money to the government to a point where government should not pay and he had to impair the debt. So he cancelled over 48 billion Ghana cities of uh, indebtedness to the bank by the government. The very, very reasons why he shut down the private banks and is persecuting the owners, and managers of those banks. He uh, said that the banks had governance problems. It is obvious from the way that he has mismanaged the bank that the central bank also has serious governance problems. So he complained about insider trading uh, by owners of the uh, private banks, for which reason many of them are being persecuted. 
it's obvious that there is connivance between the finance minister, this is the central government, and the government, and they sat by and failed to check the finance minister, and he overborrowed to a point where the international financial market has had to sack him from the international financial market. And so he failed his basic responsibilities. He bought, over borrowed from the domestic uh, bond market to a point where he cannot pay. And therefore, he is now begging bondholders to come and sit with him so that he will renegotiate the terms of all these uh, facilities. Given all these developments, I think that it is a sad reflection on finance minister is telling us to do that we should be praising the government of the central bank in deputies and not asking for their help. Well, I have no problem. I assume that the finance minister himself has very low standards because unless a person who has very low standards, you cannot be asking us to appreciate what the governor and his deputies have done to the finances of Ghana, what they have done to the central bank, and etc. You talk about policy solvency. Policy solvency is largely a function of law. It's not because the bank is doing so well in this four months. Today, the bank, as lender of last resort, mm -hmm. cannot deliver that mandate. If you know the bank runs into a crisis today, I doubt if. The central bank has any money ooh, ooh, ooh. that they can use to salvage the banking sector. If the government of Ghana, starts with Ghana goes into Ghana has a major crisis and we need money to get us out of the crisis, the central bank, given its own level of indebtedness, I dare say has no capacity to help. So I see. as the lender of last resort, and as government banker, they have failed. As for policy solvents, it's a function of law. Mm. So you cannot say that, oh, uh, they have failed in their capacity to the lender of last resort, but then they are maintaining policy solvents. For that reason, they should praise the government. We demand that the governor should resign, he and his two deputies. And in fact, given the posture and attitude of the finance minister. We now take a position that the finance minister is just not good because even if we bring in a new government, every indication is that this finance minister is going to pollute and collaborate and put pressure on them to uh, do the very things that this government and his team are doing. I see. So, now, on that bit about the finance minister, you say now you're going to add him to the Governor and the two deputies that he should he should go. We'll come to that. But oh my God, stay with me, Professor John Gatti. One of the issues that the finance minister raises in this article is that the argument that the primary objective of a central bank, and I quote, is not to make profit but to be managed as a financially sustainable institution. He justifies the losses as well, but is that consistent? with the fact and reality of what the central bank is supposed to do. If it's not supposed to make profit, is it also supposed to post losses to this tune? I think uh, the finance minister has not said anything new that uh, the governor has not said. I think uh, what is happening is that the finance minister is the one who demanded for the Bank of Ghana's support in financing uh, the budget uh, by violating the set rules. So when the Bank of Ghana governor is going through this turmoil, I, I believe uh, the thing actually affected the governor. It affected his psychic, and I believe he might have complained so the one who actually was pressing for his support to do what he did must come to support him and that is exactly what the finance minister has done 
but as to whether Ghanaians buy into it, uh, uh, it's a different issue because uh, to a large extent, people believe it is the finance minister who have caused uh, what we are experiencing. So if somebody supported him in trying to finance, uh, it's only proper for him to come and support him. But the reasons given do not add up and uh, we cannot buy that. You see, you cannot use an institution that serves as a buffer to the entire economy. You deplete the institution's strength uh, and the institution is not able to manage its own uh, affairs the way it ought to be. As I said, um, we are looking for 15 billion um, to establish stability fund for the banks. The Bank of Ghana cannot do that. We are believing that uh, other institutions will help us to do so. Why? Because the Bank of Ghana does not have what it takes to establish that. Uh, the Bank of Ghana's duty is to ensure that it provides uh, support to ailing commercial banks. But as we speak, the Bank of Ghana cannot do that because it is not able. So these are the things we are doing. While you are supporting government, uh, whether in line with the, the rules or not, you must be mindful about your mandate to protect the mandate, but that mandate is not protected. So you allow the Bank of Ghana to go down with you until the Bank of Ghana cannot redeem itself. Mm. And we are calling for capitalization of the Bank of Ghana from government. So these things, no one can uh, uh, can justify so that. I see, but you see, the finance minister is also saying in this article that he released that all instruments available must be deployed, Professor Gachi, to get the economy out of the Odyssey or the economic quagmire that we, we find ourselves in. And, and that includes the Bank of Ghana taking a haircut of the 42.3 billion CDs of the 194.3 billion domestic debt stock. That's the justification. What is the essence of uh, the haircut? Haircut only means that you have lent to government and government cannot pay. Uh, um, so government has entered into negotiation with you to elongate the maturity and, uh, 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 I mean, cut down on the interest. So if you don't lend money to Bank of Ga uh, to the government, you will not suffer haircut. And there are issues with the lending. The issue is that you have every opportunity to comply with. Um, the rules governing financing government activities in crisis. So we have not heard Bank of Ghana come that look, we are deviating for the 5% because we're in crisis. So now we are going to use 20%. We have not, we have never heard from the Bank of Ghana and parliament has never been told about that. That is what we are talking about. Then again, uh, we are saying that Bank of Ghana has a mandate to be the, the lender of last resort to commercial bank. As we speak, the Bank of Ghana is not able to do so. So those are the critical issues. Uh, the, the central banks of other countries have not I mean, come to the level that they cannot finance or they cannot I mean, uh, face their mandate yeah. squarely and perform them. Uh, this issue that we are talking about, policy uh, 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 mandate uh, that was given to uh, the central bank, that they are performing the policy mandate, we can't see it. The mandate of central bank is to ensure price stability. Tell me whether we have seen price stability in relation to interest rates. Tell me whether we have seen price stability in relation to exchange rates. Tell me whether we have seen price liability in, in, in relation to inflation. We have not seen that. Then beyond price stability, the Bank of Ghana is supposed to ensure economic development. Tell me critical and strategic areas of the economy where the Bank of Ghana has finance. 
that we have achieved economic uh, development. We have not. Bank of Ghana rather chose to give money to ailing SOEs, which we know are not able to manage those funds well uh, to return to Bank of Ghana and to contribute to the economy. So all those money are lost in the frail. So those are the issues we're talking about. It's not about being pompous uh, about uh, the management of the economy. When we are talking about critical issues, then uh, we try to trivialize it as if uh, everything was right. No, I'm not sure about that. Mm -hmm. we, we, we need to be get, getting uh, 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 some kind of uh, apologies to the people of Ghana and then assuring the people of Ghana that it will never happen again, that we will be conscious of what to do next time, we thought we were doing the right thing. We didn't know that we we'll collapse things like this. That is how you talk. Uh, ask people who believe that they are stewards of the of, of the nation. But when we have people who believe that they are not stewards, but they are rather the authority over the people, it becomes very very difficult mm. uh, to see the right thing being done. Right, Mama Yaga. So you're saying that on October three, when you I mean, the minority and uh, the other civil society organizations and, and Ghanaians hit the streets in this protest to the Bank of Ghana. You are going to demand what? The, the resignation of the, the governor, his two deputies, and now you are adding the finance minister to it as well? Exactly, because by the posture that he has adopted, he gives indication that he does not need to see anything wrong with what the central bank government, the services, and the board of banks. So, so if you have somebody of that kind of thinking, uh, being your finance minister, it means that your problem will never be solved. That's the more reason why you think that when he will also leave, and that is going to be the extension of our project. The last time your, your colleague NPP MPs, even, demanded that the president should sack the finance minister. You, you know what happened. That, that, that failed. So what are you going to do differently to, to, to get that result? Well, we are taking our struggle to the public, as you can see. That is why we are marching in the streets. That's why we have organized a demonstration on the third of the uh, October. And we will continue to engage in public protest to demand the removal of this finance minister, the governor and the deputies. Because if we don't take them out, I can assure you that our problems will never be solved. See. Oh my God, thank you. But Professor Gachi, before I let you go, I, I, I read the auditors of the Bank of Ghana, their, their report after auditing these accounts, the 2022 accounts that led to the revelations of the over 60 billion loss that they posted, they are quite clear about the extent of, of the problem that, that we're dealing with, with the central bank, reason why government would even have to come in to recapitalize the bank going forward. So you hear the governor and the finance minister speaking a different language that so it seems to water down the, the, the real problem or the extent of the problem. So what's going on? The real picture is that everybody knows that we place premium on audit reports. That is why you hear auditors report all over. People are quoting it, figures here and there. Because auditors' job is to uh, provide uh, assurance as to whether policies have been followed well in preparing the financial statement and whether management has been able to do what is expected of them. And by that, they came to a verdict that the finances have not been managed well to the extent that they are afraid whether Bank of Ghana can meet its obligations. So these are clear statements by the auditors and this has not been disputed. So those who trivialize financial statement of Bank of Ghana, uh, I don't know what they are trying to do because the auditors are confirming the financial health of the Bank of Ghana. 
and they, they indicated the financial health of Bank of Ghana is not good. Tell me whether you don't you don't consider the financial health of Bank of Ghana to be able to deliver on their mandate. I mean, I mean, so we shouldn't trivialize things. We should be apologetic. We should be giving assurance to the nation as to how we are going to do things different uh, to recover. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not we are not expecting people to come to tell us. Uh, it's needless here and there. No, it is needful. It is very important. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. And uh, Professor John Gachi, Dean of the University of Cape Coast Business School, thank you. Also to you, Mama Yarga, Boko Central Member of Parliament. Gentlemen, appreciate your time. Up next here on Ghana tonight, Embato Member of Parliament for the Dom Kabinya constituency, Sarah Adwasafo, begs for forgiveness from President Kofuado, her party, the NPP. Uh, parliamentary caucus and her constituency executives. An apology too late in time. We're going to be hearing from the executives of the MPP in the Dom Kwabenya constituency after this quick break. And some of the constituents as well have been speaking to us after this apology, which came in English and in Chi. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to demonstrate to you the superior properties of Flamingo paint as compared to other paint brands on the market. We take equal quantities of Flamingo paint and this ordinary paint. We then dilute them with water. And now, let the test begin. The gentleman on the left is going to apply the ordinary paint and the gentleman on my right will use the Flamingo superior paint. As you can clearly see, Flamingo has the obvious better hiding. Furthermore, Flamingo has painted a much larger area. You know, one bucket of Flamingo paint is equal to several buckets of any other paint brand on the market. Flamingo paint is made with superior formulation to give superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage. Flamingo paint, simply superior. Everybody knows Acrobato. And if you know Acrobato, it means you know M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. M Punch Homeopathy Clinic is my pillar. Let's hear what others are saying about M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. Who will be careful for M Punch Wana? Ha! I'm not sure if problems. I'm not sure if you have any 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 I'm not sure if you have any problems. I'm not sure if you have and then you call endpoint. I'm a man who's raw. And then why did you want me to sorry an anti? That's endpoint for you. Of course, brother. Hello. Hey, what should you watch? Okay. A free player who did endpoint what does he? I'm a boy, you know. Me just say my name, call you. And pass on my email, you know. And then my Gina Sabema. Now we don't be fear for the. The whole day, you know, just like that. You got everything. I have secret. Endpoint is my secret. Endpoint from your party clinic. Every. Who is the ultimate energy personality of the year at the seventh edition of your prestigious Ghana Energy? Award. Under the theme, Ghana's energy transition framework, sector institutions has building block for the 2030 to 2040 target. You can nominate yourself or an institution for categories such as CEO of the Year, Energy Investment Impact Award, Energy Signature Award, Endorsement, Validation, Industry Partners, Media Partners, TV3, Ghana Energy Awards, seven years of redefining excellence. From the heart of our nation to your screens, we present Ghana's Most Beautiful, a show that brings forth the stories, dreams, and aspirations of remarkable young ladies. Every episode unfolds a new chapter of discovery as our delegates immerse themselves in the culture, history, and spirit of their regions. From thrilling challenges to heartwarming moments, witness their transformative journey to become the next Ghana's most beautiful queen. GMB 2023, Ghana's beauty. Africa's pride. GMB 2023 is sponsored by Gino Tomato Mix, GTP, Techno Common 20 Series, AT.
peptidant charcoal and lemon infused formula and peptidant natural herbal formula geisha moringa and geisha black soup key soup bell pack tissues sankofa natural spices vita milk deluxe acrylic paint nescofa blood tonic heaven black mosquito spray and coil enapa foods freedom from casa precon frutelli calipo duffy's health and beauty obuasi bitters nubna womuankasa dragnet shalatem Top Choku, Global Wings Travel and Tour. Makeup was done by House of Tara. The age-old rivalry that senior high schools engage in is still present within alumni. The battle for bragging rights to a particular endeavor remains even after school. If your school can cook, it means your school is here. If your school can boast of good culinary masterminds, this right here is the perfect platform to showcase that skill set. Alumni have met and they have chosen representatives to take up the task of preparing extraordinary dishes to bring victory to their respective schools. Tell me what you're cooking. Week in, week out, these schools will mount these workstations in a bid to buy your nutritional affinity to them. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare your taste buds and fasten your aprons. These culinary experts are set to battle for the enviable crown of being tagged lords of the kitchen. This is Kitchen Wars Season 2. Kitchen Wars Season 2, Sundays at 5 p.m. on TV3. Don't miss it. Sponsored by Gino Tomato Mix. And Napa Foods. Say Napa. And here on Soko. PG. Welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight. Well, the Member of Parliament for the Dom Kobinya constituency, Sarah Joseph, earlier today... Uh, posted a video um, indicating that she is really sorry about everything she's put her concerns, the NPP, both in Parliament and the party at large, the President and the Chief of Staff, what the, she's put them through over the period. We know her conduct. At the point she had to be referred to the Privileges Committee of Parliament, the majority NPP MPs, in fact, the leadership wanted that seat declared vacant. The minority thought otherwise in a very, very unfamiliar fashion, came to defend Adwa Safo. But this is the apology video. Take a look. We have the English version, because the, there was a Chi version and then the English one. This is what we have. To prefer my sincere apology to His Excellency the President, Nana Adudangwa Ekufuado, the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, the Chief of Staff, Honorable Frema Osei Opari, the majority leader and the entire leadership of parliament, my colleague members of parliament, the entire majority caucus, the leadership of our great party, the national chairman and the general secretary together with all your executives, the regional executives of Greater Accra, the constituency executives of Dome Pardenia led by chairman Bosu, all cooling station executives, I wish to state that I'm sincerely sorry. I apologize for my actions and inactions. None of my actions were intentional, deliberate, or calculated to bring disrepute to our great party. I was going through a lot as a mother and as a woman. I want to take this opportunity to ask for your forgiveness for anything untoward that I have done to bring the name of the party into disrepute. As the saying goes, to err is human and to forgive is divine. I ask for your forgiveness. My name is Ajua Safo, the Member of Parliament for the Good People of Domi Pabinya. Thank you and God bless you all. Well, so, this apology had recipients stated quite clearly. The President, the Chief of Staff, the Majority Caucus in Parliament and so on, including the constituents. So we went to the Dom Kabinya constituency just to gauge the mood after this apology. And uh, some of the constituents shared their experiences and also their reaction to this video with us. Take a look. 
Peter. For me, there's no any forgiveness for Joseph. What she did in this, in this community was wrong. And there's an election coming, and she wants to beg so that she can get a chance to, to do whatever she, she wanted to do. Look at the road at Dominic Abinia here. We have a bad road. We are, we are angry with her because we, 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 don't, we don't want her to come back and, I mean, to do what she did before. Um, I heard a couple of few things that she said, though, but I think <laughs> because it's, it's getting closer to the election year, so I think it's one of those things of politicians. You could see that um, the youth are rather coming up now, and then um, it's getting tougher. And we are wising up. Things are not moving on for the youth. I don't think <laughs> it's, it's going to change anything if, if she's bringing that apology up. You are interested with something, you just have to do it and do it well. So staying away from your job, there is no excuse for that. You cannot just leave your work and go somewhere and come back to say sorry. If you were to be in a private sector, your boss will not allow you. So why should we allow it in the government sector? As I see a timid near example, Mobia or what and Pastor Subia, ye be a wire careful. Gana, I did ye almost so a check. Mila Cabea crank as a son money gina cra, no man, quiet cram or bab crab you. Mombia came to our mamma, okay. Me, I don't accept his apologize for this constituency. Because actually, all my problem is this market. Massa, if you go inside right now, you, you, you will not be feeling happy. I'm telling you, I've been in this market for 20 years now. We haven't seen any improvement in this market. Oh, 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 so, so it appears that one of the recipients of this apology, as a constituents, they, they are not too happy, they are not convinced. So let's go to another recipient of this apology. As the constituency executive, the Dom Kwabinya constituency executive of the MPP, Theophilus Ansalabi is the Dom Kwabinya constituency NPP general secretary. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. So, for you, as the executives of the constituency, is this apology going to now calm you, forgive her? She's asking so that you can support her bid to contest in 2024 as your parliamentary candidate. Of life, actually, um, whatever she thinks she's done, and she's calling for an a forgive. But as as the leadership of the party of which I am part, and a delegation, I am part of the delegates who will be voting to select a PC. And um, what we are supposed to do as delegates is to listen to the mass that vote in the general election, so that we give a representation of a personality that they would love, they would like, and vote massive, massively for him or her. So, if all this thing has gone out about an honorable adjuster for and people are not happy on the ground, and they, they are saying this time around, if you bring honorable adjuster for, we're not going to, to help you campaign, we're not going to help you vote, then it's going to be a trouble. Then you're not listening to the judge to bring her as the candidate again, that is the problem. Because um, the last election, all these things Ajo has been doing started before the election. It didn't help in the campaign. It did not do anything after the election. And she just went away after the election. She's just coming back to apologize. Yes, apology, well taken. But I don't think if we give the feedback to Ajo Sapo, um, the, the vote of the NDC will increase again, which wouldn't like going into 2024, because on uh, the last election, NDC has never gotten 50,000 votes in Dominic Avenue before, but for the first time they got it because of certain attitude our uh, MP put before the constituency election. I, well, I, I see. But then again, you say you've forgiven her, but then if she shows up tomorrow and says, you know what, I've just heard you say on Ghana tonight that you've forgiven me. I want to contest as the parliamentary candidate for the NPP in the Dom Kwabinya constituency. Would you, the executives of the party in that constituency, support her bid? What I'm saying is that in one of her interviews, she said it is the people of the Kwabinya who are inviting her or calling her to come 
contest again. Indeed. So if, if the people have called you, what is this apology all about? They have called you. They have forgiven you before they called you. So what is this about again? If you've gone out there to say this is a story, so why worry then? I don't think there's a point in getting yourself worried. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is that I am a delegate, not just a delegate. I am a leader of the party. And as a delegate, you represent a group of people. So you have to go to the people, ask them what they want, and you do what the people want, not what you want. So as a leader of the party, I'll go to the ground mm -hmm. and ask people what type of person or what kind of person they want us to bring this time round so they all rally behind us so we can keep our seat. And what they are telling us is for what Honorable Ajo has done within her three terms as an MP, I think there should be a cut, cut of point. And that is what I think. So if I, I mean well for the party, then there's no point I will support her bid. But campaigning will be very difficult. Even if we will win, it will be very difficult than to bring a new candidate. Well, I, I have a video, in fact where she, she declares her intentions to contest again in 2024, regardless of what she, as you're saying, she's put you through and, and, and the NPP in parliament as well. She says that she's received very good reception. She will contest. Take a look. Sarah Ajua Safo for more than a year lost touch with her constituents, compelling the people in the constituency to complain about her long absence. Even the constituency party executives were upset. But the MP says she is back for good, adding that she has already met with some executives and constituents and explained to them reasons for her absence. This is Greater Accra and there comes a time where we celebrate Homo Festival. So it's, it's a religious thing that we always do, that we pay Ketsi calls on all the chiefs in the communities and then wish them um, a happy Homo War, happy year, and ask for their blessings also. And the feeling I'm having now with the people that are coming out just to scream your name, just to have a handshake, I think I still have a lot to do for my people. And I, I have to take the pain to explain to them the reasons for my absence and especially the mothers and the, the old um, ladies and the queen mothers are also mothers and so they understand what I have been through and they sympathize and I think we can be bend the bridges and make uh, a good contest for 2024 and retain this seat for the new patriotic party. The constituents were happy to see their MP back. We have to say here today we are very, very happy to see her so that we can give her our needs for him to accomplish it for us. I'm happy to see her because a very long time since we vote for her, I didn't see her. So today, if I'm seeing her, I'm good to see her. As for her, she have a chance. She win. I appreciate their concerns because we all use the rules. And as I spoke to the chiefs, I've told them and promised them that we would facilitate for the construction of these um, roads. The three-time MP who on Friday visited the chiefs and people of some communities in her constituency promised to settle issues with the constituency chairman and others who were against her. My constituency chairman is a very fine gentleman and I... I don't think that he's somebody who would ever doubt my candidature or my popularity in the constituency. Politics is a game of numbers. So I have met my constituency chairman and I have told him what I am telling you now. And um, I know at the right time he would have to um, also come in if he has to. Because if it's the will of God and the people want me, I will not desert them. The well, so Theophilus, she says she's spoken to the constituency as a, uh, as a chairman. You are the secretary of this constituency for the NPP. You were in that meeting as well, from what I understand. So after this apology, nothing changes? Exactly so. Exactly so. Because I work on the ground, and I know what I've heard from the people. People know very well that I'm a leader in the constituency. I know what they tell me. 
I don't know whether she hears the same and she still wants to contest, but it's her own right to contest. No, but no one will deprive her of that. So to give the form, nomination form to file for nomination, she can go ahead and campaign for the primaries. And if it works out well for her, hallelujah. If the people say no because of what you have done, why not? We have the men. How, how widespread is this position that she shouldn't contest again or you don't want her as your, your parliamentary candidate? How widespread is it? I have been a constituent secretary for three terms from 2013 to date. So I am, I am in the position to tell you what I'm telling you because I'm not an armchair executive. I go, go around, I go to the grassroots, I go to the people, I speak to the people, I tell us the concerns they have with the party in the constituency in terms of development, in terms of everything they want us to do for them as a party. I know what I'm talking about. Majority of the constituents are not happy with Honorable Adjustapo. It's as simple as that. I see. So you would support anybody else who shows up or who contests, but not Adjuasafo. That's is, is this a position that the entire executives of the NPP in the Dom Kwabanya constituency share, or is it just you talking? In time past, I don't think she appreciated it. She didn't reward us well to the extent that uh, our seat nearly got declared vacant in the time that um, the whole world was going into financial crisis that Ghanaians probably may blame our party for that situation where the Ukraine and Russia war were having effect on our economy and um, the COVID, after the COVID, the situation the country's economy went through, no incumbent political party will go through by election at that period that will do well. And that is the same period Honorable Ajaza did not do well with us. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, Theophilos Ansa Labi is secretary of the NPP in the Dom Kwabinyak constituency. Thank you for time. Now, uh, before we go, very sad news. Uh, seven fishermen are reportedly missing um, at Azania in Adda after a boat capsized. We hear from the authorities in the area what the latest situation is and uh, we earlier reported this and uh, earlier we spoke to the national disaster management organization nadmo in that particular community and this is the update that they gave to us the number eight and seven that are missing uh, initially we had a call this morning that uh, uh, some boats got accidents while trying to cross to land safely at the at the shore um, when we got there, we found out that these two uh, canoes were involved. Uh, the, the name of the first one is Shalom, which had um, uh, 11 people on board. Out of the 11, uh, 10 people were saved, and we had one person missing. Uh, the second boat is um, called Barcelona, and it also had um, eight people on board. And as at the time we got there, um, all the eight were missing. But later we found that two people were saved at a community called Kwaveme. This Kwaveme is a community uh, along the shores of um, water region. So, uh, yes, families went to then uh, pick their people. But the other six in the second boat are still missing. The boat itself, the album motor, the fishing, everything is missing. So search is ongoing, um, and that both together with uh, Ghana Navy are uh, doing the searching. And so tomorrow we continue with the search, and then the next day after tomorrow, the search will continue. Uh, it is as a result of the uh, strong waves coming from the sea. The sea is very rough, and after the time we got the call, we were told uh, there were so many fishing boats on the sea awaiting the sea to become a little bit um, smooth for them to be able to land safely. And so as at 12 
uh, PM, none of the boats that went to fishing yesterday was able to land. But as we speak, I am no, I will not be able to say whether they have come to land safely or not. Okay, so that's the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, giving updates of this rather unfortunate incident. We have eyes on that. Tomorrow, uh, we will be in that community, my colleague, Gold Armstrong Alogwe is already there and we understand that the search and rescue effort is ongoing throughout the night. So tomorrow morning we'll give you some updates. On behalf of the rest of the team, I want to say thank you so much for staying with us here on Ghana tonight. Join us same time tomorrow. I am Alfred Okanse. Have a good night. Ghana Tonight is brought to you by Flamingo Paint, superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage, simply superior.